of sines um, is just slight, I mean, it's still a formula, so it's still about as easy as formulas can be to work with. It's just slightly more difficult to remember. There are three of them, but only because um, you have different angles that you would be working based off of and different sides that you would be isolating. So you can see that there's clearly a pattern going on here. So uh, you use the law of cosines in two different situations. Uh, if the information you're given is side angle side, or if the information you're given is side, side, side. So this is what the law of cosines is. Um, at the beginning, it kind of reminds me of the Pythagorean theorem. You guys can kind of see that, okay? When I look at the law of cosines, I do not memorize this specifically. Um, I think of this as like um, the side that I'm looking for squared. I shouldn't see any law of sines packets out, not a single one. So all the law, the law of sines packets need to go away. So the one I see on this table, we'll put it away. All right. Um, so it should be the side that you're looking for squared equals the other two sides squared added together minus, and then you can see that these two sides are the same. So whatever sides you were given, and then the angle. So you'll notice that this side and this angle match up. So with side, angle, side, you would be given all of this information, and this would be the piece that you're solving for. So you'd be able to plug everything in here, and it's pretty straightforward if that's the case. So um, they did one for you, so they gave you the information um, that you had side, angle, side. So you had two sides in the angle between them. You had angle A was 65 degrees. Um, side, what side is that? Side C is 12, side B is 10. And so they said we're looking for the length of side A. So side A squared is the other two sides squared, so 10 squared plus 12 squared minus two times 10 times 12 times cos of 65. So you don't have to worry so much about plugging in uh, for specific letters and worry more about the pattern. So each side squared added together minus two times this two sides multiplied times cos of the angle that's in between. If you can kind of memorize it that way, that's the better way to memorize it. Uh, and then they plugged everything in and they got a squared equals a big number and then they square rooted that big number and they got the missing side. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. So they told us that the measure of angle B is 150. So I'm gonna go ahead and label that. This is 150 degrees. They told us that side A was 150 as well, just not degrees, it's whatever length that is. Side C is 30. And here they only tell us to find side B, but I'm actually gonna have us solve the triangle because I want us to do more than just find one side. And let me go ahead and focus more if we can, maybe, okay. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do since we have side, angle, side information is we're gonna solve for the missing side first side B. So I'm going to say B squared equals, and then I'm just going to follow the general pattern of law of cosines. So law of cosines says take the two sides and add them together squared. So 30 squared plus 150 squared minus two times the two sides multiplied together. Two times 30 times 150 times cos of the angle that's across from this side. So the two sides squared added together, and you could have written 150, plus, um, 150 squared plus 30 squared minus two times 150 times 30, that doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. Uh, and then cos 150. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and type that into my calculator. So 30 squared plus 150 squared minus two times 30 times 150 times cos of 150 degrees. Just typing it straight in. 
And remember, the number you're going to get is going to be kind of big because it's not the side length, it's the side length squared. So what are we getting? Yeah, 31,000 something. Okay, so I got B squared is 31,000... 194.2 Yeah, I went ahead and rounded it. So 0.229, I rounded up to a 9 because it was followed by a 6. Okay. And then what do I need to do to this answer to get that side length? I need to square root it. So I'm going to square root, get the square root up on the screen. I'm going to go up and grab my decimal copy paste it in there and then once I square root that what do I get yeah uh, degrees okay do you have did you do minus not negative when you typed yeah. this in this is looks kind of long and you checked and you have no typos uh, yes. you did cos not sine Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You're good. All right. So we should get 176 point something. Is that what you guys are getting? Okay. 176.619. Okay. Now, to find more missing information in the problem, we can use law of cosines or we can use law of sines. Do you guys have a preference? Law of signs. And most students have that preference because law of signs is a little bit easier. Okay. So it, I'm going to go ahead and label this. And I'm going to say uh, my side B is 176.619. Okay. Now, if we're going to do law of signs, we want to avoid the ambiguous case. We don't want to take anything when we do law of signs and do angle side side. We want to make sure that if we're using law of signs to find more information, that when we use law of signs, the information that we use is angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, to make sure that we're not doing the ambiguous case, we're not accidentally doing a situation where there's two triangles and we accidentally find the wrong one, which doesn't happen all the time. You wouldn't do it on like every single problem, but you could accidentally do it, and I've done that before. Okay, so what I'm going to do with law of signs, we always look at the pair of information we have. We avoid decimals if we can, which when you're doing a law of signs problem is really easy to do. But we're doing a law of cosines problem, so when we look at our pair of information, our pair of information has a decimal. So for us to finish this problem, we're going to have to use a decimal, which means we're going to have to copy paste that number in our calculator to make sure that we don't mess anything up in the final problem. Okay, so I'm going to do the law of signs, law of signs to finish the problem. This is not a rule. You don't have to use law of signs. You can use law of cosines if you want to finish the problem, but most students like to do law of signs. So I'm going to do law of signs, and I'm going to make sure that the information that I have to finish with the law of signs is either angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. I want it to be one or the other, okay? So I'm going to start with sine of 150 over 176.619, and I'm not going to type that rounded decimal in. I'm going to go up and copy-paste when I use it, okay? Now, uh, if we do... Uh, we clearly have all three sides, so that's fine. What we need next is an angle, angle A or angle C. And if we were to use angle A, then the information we would be using is angle A, angle B, and side B. And what would that be giving us? What information would that be giving us? Is it one of these? That would be angle, angle, side. So that would be fine. We could do side A next, and that would be fine. Okay? What about if we chose to do uh, angle C next? What information would we be using? Angle, angle, side again. Everyone see that? We'd be using angle B, angle C, and side B. So that would be angle, angle, side. 
So it doesn't matter what we do next. We will be fine either way. Does that make sense? Law of signs is totally fine in this problem. We will make no mistakes. We will be perfectly okay. We're not going to get an angle side side problem. Does that make sense? We're just double checking. Okay. So do you guys want to do A or C? A. Let's do A. So I'm going to say this equals sine of angle A divided by side A, which is 150. And for me to do this problem, I have law of sines. So what do I do with the law of sines problem? Cross multiply. Okay. So I'm going to get 176.619 times sine A equals 150 sine 150. And then what do I do? Divide by my decimal. So sine A equals whatever that decimal is. So I'm going to have 150 sine 150 divided by, and I need to go up and grab that decimal. So 176.619, I'm not going to type the rounded decimal. I'm going to go up and grab the decimal for my calculator. Ugh, but not in there. In here. I don't know how to make it paste in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to type it this way. 150 sine 150. 150 sine 150 divided by, now I can go up and grab it. Aha, I beat you, calculator. Okay, everyone getting that typed in? Yes? Okay, 0.425, is that what we got? Okay, so sine of A is 0.425, so how do we find A? Sine inverse, okay. So sine inverse, I'm going to go up and grab that decimal. So that angle is 25.128. 25.128. Now we know the last angle is the easiest one to find. How do we find the very last one? Yeah, just subtract it from 180 because it's a triangle. So angle A is 25.128. Goodness gracious. You guys will have to tell me if you like the doodling part enough to have to write tiny. No, we're not, we're not about the doodling. Not, not good enough. Okay, 180 minus 25.128 minus 150, and the third angle is 4.872. This is 4.872. 4.872. Okay, we solved it. Whew. All right, and in here, I'm just going to circle this real quick, angle, angle, side, to show that this is the information I had when I did the law of sines. Okay. Yes? So angle, angle, side is saying that when I build this little ratio equals a ratio, that when I build that, the numbers that I'm building it with that are actually there are two angles and a side that is not in between them. That's why the side is like next to it. Here, this is two angles. And then if you look, it would be the side that is in between the angles. So when we built our ratio, we used angle B and side B. And then we used side A. 
or sorry, angle A. That was what we were what we were trying to like solve for. Two angles on a side. Miss Rice, use your brain. We were using angle side side. Hmm. Miss Rice. B. Angle side side. But our answer made sense. Let's try, let's, no, I just discovered, let's try the next one. I'll come back, I'll come back to that. That's, well, okay, so what this means is you have two angles and a side that's not in between them, right? So what we had is we, what we were using is we had angle A and angle B, and side B is not in between them. That's what that means. If you had angle side angle, you would have two angles, and the side that is in between them. That's the difference. So this means two angles, side that's not in between them, two angles, side that is in between them. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this next one. All right. This says we have two sides. Ooh, here's a typo. Two sides of a parallelogram are 12 centimeters and 15.8 centimeters. Okay. So we're going to label this kind of by scale, the way it should be, 15.8, 15.8, okay. Uh, the largest angle is 150 degrees. Find the length of the longer diagonal. Okay, so here, so the diagonals just go from the opposite corner to the opposite corner. So this would be the shorter diagonal. So they want us to find the length of this. So what we have done is we have divided that uh, parallelogram into two triangles. The information they gave us in the two triangles is side, angle, side. And so this is a law of cosines problem. And I'm going to call this x. The length of the diagonal is what we want to find. So I'm going to say x squared equals... And then what should I write down to find, um, what should I write down so that I can find the length of the missing side? Fifteen point eight. Uh-huh. Cos. Cosine 150. Because it's got to be the angle, right? Anytime you take a trig function, it's got to be at the angle. Mm -hmm. So we do, uh, we have the side that we're finding. So this is the other two sides, and this is the other two sides. So 15.8 squared, 12 squared, 2 times 15.8 times 12, and then cos of 150 is the angle that it's, that's across from the side that we're finding. Okay, so how do I solve for the missing side? Just type it all in. All right, and what are you guys getting? 722.037. X squared is 722.037. Okay. And then what should we do? Square root that decimal. Mm-hmm. 
26.871. The diagonal is... So I didn't leave x equals in the problem because I was the one who used the variable x. The problem didn't use the variable x. All right, let's go ahead and try the next problem. So it says uh, the angle at one corner of a triangular plot on the ground is 73 degrees. Um, which one of these do you guys feel like is closest to 73? I'm going to label these A, B, C. Which one do you guys think looks like 73 degrees? A? C to me looks like 45. Doesn't that look like 45? Okay. So I so it's between A and B. Mm. Yeah, let's do A. Okay. So we're going to say A is 73 degrees. Okay? Uh and the sides that meet at this corner are 175 and 160. Okay, so we have side B and side C. Which one between B and C looks longer to you guys? B looks longer. So B is going to be 175. And C is 160. Okay. All right, so there's our labels. Uh, it says find the length of, approximate the length of the third side. When they say approximate here, they don't mean eyeball it. That's not what they mean. Uh, approximate is the same thing as like when you find decimals and round, you're finding approximately the right answer because it's not perfect, you're rounding. So let's go ahead and figure it out. We've got side angle side is the information, so we're going to use law of cosines. So what should I be writing? Okay, perfect. So we're going to plug that straight into the calculator. 175 squared plus 160 squared minus 2 times 175 times 160 times cos 73. And does that give us our answer? No. Almost always when a student thinks they got it wrong, it's because they thought this was the answer. So be careful of that. That's a really easy mistake to make. So A squared is approximately, starts with a 3. Then what do we have? Okay, and then if we square root that, perfect. So the third side, because in this problem there's no such thing as A. 
So the third side is 199.630. Okay, do not flip over your paper. Leave it right here. Do not flip it over. Okay. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Okay. If I wanted to get A, the angle closer to being alone, what would you guys probably do if I wanted to get this closer to be alone? Move everything to the other side? So what could we do? Mm -hmm. What if we wanted to avoid negatives? Because I know a lot of times we like to avoid having negatives if we can. Is that okay if we try to do that? So what if I give you the prompt and say, we're going to do what you said, but we're going to add this whole thing to the other side to start with. Are you guys okay with that? Okay, you don't have to write this on notes. I just want you guys to talk me through it from here. So I'm going to take this whole chunk and I'm going to move this to the other side just so I don't have this negative. Okay, so at this point, I would have b squared plus c squared on the right side. And what would I have on the left side? Okay. And if I'm still trying to get to my a being alone, what would I do next? I would take the a squared and I would just minus that over to the other side. Are we comfortable with that? That's the easiest thing to move away from the angle, right? Okay. So I have 2bc times cos a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared. Okay. And how could I get closer to angle a being alone? So I could say cos of angle A is B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. And then from here, would this be pretty easy to do in the calculator? Like cos of angle A, we do that a lot, right? Cos of angle A equals something that's a decimal. And then we would know how to handle it. This is what the other side of your paper does. Um, it doesn't start off with the law of cosines. What it did is it took and it isolated every single angle so that you could work with that instead because it's a little bit easier to do that. So the pattern here is that if you're looking to solve for angle A, then you're still going to have the other two sides squared and added together and you're still going to have two times the other two sides but it just mixes up the formula a little bit. So the other two sides squared added together, but minus uh, the side that corresponds to this angle squared. If we're looking for angle B, it's the other two sides squared added together, just like it was before. We still have two times the other two sides, but we're also gonna minus the side that corresponds with this. Do you guys see how it's kind of similar to the other side? Okay, so I've never taught it like this before because that's like memorizing a whole nother formula. I usually just had my students um, like work with this and do the solving every single time. Do you guys have a preference? Do we want to memorize another formula or do we want to start with this and solve it each time? Solve each time? Solve each time? Yeah? Better? Okay. All right, so what we're going to do then is let's start. Uh, we're going to kind of, uh, let's X out her work right here. 
because we're going to do it a little bit differently then since we're not going to be using the formula. And um, to be honest, I don't really like what she did there anyway. Okay. Well, I guess we don't really need to redraw the triangle though. We can still use her triangle. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Now, one thing on this, and I didn't like that she did this anyway. Whenever you use law of cosines, you should always go from the biggest angle to the smallest angle. So she started off finding the smallest angle. Can anyone tell me how I knew that she found the smallest angle, but not even based on the look of the picture? But I could tell based on the math of the problem that she found the smallest angle. How did I know that? She found angle B first. How do I know she found the smallest angle? Yeah, the side is the smallest. So the biggest angle is across from the biggest side. The smallest angle is across from the smallest side. Okay? All right. So if we look at this, if I wanted to find the biggest angle first, which angle should I be finding? A. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with the biggest side because we're going to find the biggest angle. So I'm going to say the biggest side squared equals the other two sides added together. minus 2 times the other two sides times cos A. All right, and what I do is I do as much math as I can without getting decimals. So I don't type in cos of anything, and you can't type in cos of anything anyway because your variable's right here. But we can at least figure out what this is. We can figure out what this is, and we can figure out what the coefficient of cos is going to be. So let's figure out what these three sets of numbers are. So we're going to have 80 squared, which if you are good at your uh, 10 powers, you already know what it is. But what is 80 squared? Yeah, 6,400. Okay, 60 squared plus 25 squared. Anybody? You all have calculators? 4,225. Okay, and then we're going to do 2 times 60 times 25. 3,000 even, okay. Okay, so now if we're trying to get to the angle, what should we do? Okay, so in here, I'm not even worried about the negative because we'll get rid of that pretty quick. So I typically would take this number and just subtract it over, right? Yep, okay. So I'm going to minus the 4,225 minus the 4,225. So what do we get? 2,175, okay equals negative 3,000 cos A, okay? And how do we get cos alone? What's happening to these two things? What are they currently doing? They're multiplying, so we need to divide, okay? So 2,175 divided by negative 3,000 And I get that cos A equals the decimal negative 0.725. And then how do I solve for A? Inverse. Okay, so cos inverse of negative 0.725. This is not uh, a decimal that's rounded. This is a perfect decimal, so I just typed it in. And I get A is approximately 136.469. 136.469. Okay, we all good with that one? All right, we're going to do it again, and the next angle that we find is always the next biggest. So are we going to go for angle B next? 
Nope, we're still not going to go with what the other teacher had. We're going to go with the other angle. Oop, okay, so there's angle A. Next, we're going to go for angle C because that's the next biggest angle. So if I'm going to go for angle C next, how should I be writing the law of cosines? I'm going to start with side C, 60 squared equals... Eighty squared plus twenty-five squared. Times. Okay. And then what do we do? Yeah, we figure out what our numbers are. So sixty squared is going to be thirty-six with two zeros. 80 squared plus 25 squared, 7,025, 2 times 80 times 25 is 4,000. Okay. So what do I do now? I take the number, I subtract the number over. So 3,600 minus 7,025 negative equals negative 4,000 cos C. OK? Okay, divide by negative 4,000. I lost it. Okay, divide by negative 4,000. And that decimal equals cos C. And then I do cos inverse, cos inverse of that answer, 31.102. And then what's the easiest way to find the last angle? Subtract from 180. So we're not going to do hard math for the rest of them. No need to use the law of cosines again. 180 minus that decimal. And at this point, uh, you're not going to have rounding errors, really. If you use, as long as you use more than three decimal places, you'll be fine. But I'm just going up and grabbing copy paste. Ooh. All right, and we should get what for the last angle? What are you guys getting? Twelve point, and I got four two nine. Okay. How do you guys feel? Feel all right? Feel okay? All right. Um, let me go ahead and hand out the practice assignment. We'll figure out which of the problems we're going to do for regular credit, which ones we're going to do for extra credit.